All right, everybody, it's Wednesday again, again. <laughs> the markets are down here below. And while I'm showing you that, uh, I want to thank everybody from last week uh, for, you know, for the positive uh, feedback. Uh, for that video. I know it wasn't the smoothest video. I was kind of just testing the waters to see if it's something anybody's going to like and uh, So I've been working on the on the, the spreadsheets for you guys trying to make it more detailed So it, I, I'm not a spreadsheet guy So it's not been a fun week for me <laughs> trying to figure out how to do these spreadsheets, man, and I want to thank uh, I'm drawing a blank off the top of my head uh, for emailing me some help man. It really was a big help Thank you. You know who you are and I'll I'll put your name down here somewhere. So you guys so you guys can see who he, he sent out a little link to me in my email and it really did help a lot and it got me moving on to other things which is really uh, really appreciate it. and I even thank the guys who didn't give me a uh, very positive feedback from last week yeah, you know even the laugh out loud kind of thing uh, was uh, <laughs> you hurt my feelings <laughs> that's okay man everybody's not gonna like me man that's fine I'm good with that so yeah, it was an article, man. I think I might try to do this weekly. You guys have to let me know if you like this, but uh, I've been you know trying to bring some articles in, and I, I thought it'd be fun to uh, bring this in and just do a little uh, because you know the big thing is everybody's talking about. It. I mean, all you gotta do is circle uh, YouTube a bunch of times, and it's all about inflation, you know. And uh, we're gonna go into uh, uh, into a recession. And uh, so I was just kind of playing around the other day at lunch, man, and I, I found this little article uh, about uh, the recession. And it said, here it is, it says risk, real big, you know. And uh, it, says, it was on Seeking Alpha. Uh, These defensive ETFs have hit record highs as a potential re recession looms. And it was just back on the 8th, so this is not like recent reason, but it was with this month. So the Walmart, uh, Wall Street has, uh, Walmart, Wall Street has been on the edge lately with financial markets roiled by the host of factors, yield curve erosion, rising inflation, rate increase, uh, hikes, uh, uh, a possible recession in ge geopolitical tensions. In this environment, it's no surprise that exchange traded funds focused on defensive stocks have become popular, pushing several to all time record highs. Okay, so I don't know if I'll read the whole article, but again, it was on uh, 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 seeking, uh, seeking Gains. That's me, Dave, on Seeking Gains, uh, Seeking Alpha. And uh, they, they, they pinpointed to is in particular, investors have poured in, uh, into utilities, uh, consumer staples, and healthcare fund, uh, sector funds looking for safety in an uncertain market. And we can definitely say it's uncertain. <laughs> this, this, it's been a pretty weak is week, uh, even though today wasn't too bad. Uh, three defensive ETFs that have set record trading highs are the utility sector, uh, SPDR, uh, which I'll just go XLU. Uh, the consumer staples XLP, and then we have the healthcare XLV. And uh, let me just see here real quickly. It, uh, let's see the XLU. That was the world's largest utilities-based ETF with more than 15 billion dollars uh, in assets under management and 30 key holdings. Um, the fund top position is Next Next Era Energy and EE, weighed in at. 15.83%. Uh, down here, the XLP is also the largest in its sector, it, as this ETF has 15.8 billion under its belt and it comes uh, forward with 33 holdings led by Procter and Gamble. Uh, and an XLV is the powerhouse fund of its sector, as it leads all other ET, uh, healthcare ETFs with 38.77 billion in its name with uh, 66 uh, key holdings led by uh, United Health Group. Okay, so my thought was, okay, so yeah, the reset, there's a lot more to this article. I'm not, like I said, I don't want to read the whole entire article. But um, my whole thought was, well, okay, it's doing great now, but how would it compare to the SPY over a matter of time? So we'll bring Dave in. I know we didn't bring him in last week. Let's bring Dave in, let him go over uh, some statistics and some numbers just to see where we would be one year, two, uh, one year. I don't remember what he wanted. He did. I know one year and five year, and I don't know what else he did, but it's all yours, Dave. Well, thank you, Dave. Let's just jump right on into it. I don't want to waste your guys' time on a Wednesday evening, so let's go. So let's see, take it a uh, year to date. So far, uh, the spy, yeah, is, is, is getting beat by these three big time. Uh, XLU is in the well. Actually, it's really not in the lead at the moment because XLP and XLU come, you know, clashing together there year to date. 
uh, XLV is down though, but it's still above the SPY. So he's so far ahead, yeah, it's a good. So let's go to the one year and you can see here, let's go into it. One year we have SPY at 3.97. XLU at 14.74, XLP at 18.51, and XLV at 10.76. Let's jump out to uh, three years. Okay, let's drop it down here. Let's go on to it. So in three years, now the SPY is uh, in second place at 52.60. You got XLU at 40.71, XLP 50.51, and XLV at 58.56. And let's go to five years. Five years out, man. Let's see where we're at. Let's get down there on the end there. Okay, so the spy. Whoops. Let me get back on there. Right, come on, come on, come on. And the spy is 96.25%. XLU is 67.56%. L XLP 64.86 and the XLV is 95.04. So five years out, a SPY is still beating all three of these ETFs. But in the short term, definitely these three ETFs are, are beating uh, the SPY. So let's go back to year to date. And then you can see that there. Um, so the SPY is negative 9.5% as of right now. Uh, and the worst next worst one would be an XLV at a negative 4.19. So let's jump over to... Uh, uh, how this would perform if we actually put money into it. All right, so we put $10,000 into it. Let's see, I got there's no rebalancing. I have it as reinvest dividends. I have a display income. Now it's only gonna display the income of the uh, three that are in you know that are in question. Uh, I put the SPY in there as a comparable so we can actually see. So we got, you can see here XLU1 is in portfolio one, 100%, portfolio two, XLP, and an XLV uh, is in <laughs> portfolio three. I'll get that out. So we scroll down here real quickly, and uh, you can see allocations of 100% uh, of each. Okay, so let's go right here. Right on, okay, so what you got here is the, S the SPY, after 10 years, would be $43,750, which to me, uh, the closest one would be healthcare at 46864 and the consumer staples would be 30677 uh, and then you got the uh, utilities down there at 29 485 and then again you can see that right here uh, each one of these broken down and you can obviously see that the healthcare is actually leading if 10 years back if you had invested ten dollars a ten dollars ten thousand into this this uh, fund and that puts the spider in second place uh, the consumer staples in third and again utilities in last place so you can go down here the annual returns uh, you, you see that there I'm not going to get into this. I'm going to try to keep this video kind of short. And you can see each one of these over time with the portfolio income. You can see that uh, the utilities pays the most for the most part on every single one of these, except for in 2019, you got the healthcare actually paid a little more for the portfolio from the dis distributions and the dividends. Uh, this year, obviously, it's not uh, finished yet. So you, there it is. But for the most part, you can see it's pretty much straight across the board. So there you go, guys. Back over to Dave. Well, thank you, Dave. Appreciate that, man. So. We're gonna go ahead and jump into uh, the e ETFs and see how they're performing uh, year to date and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm gonna to have to be honest with you, uh, the leveraged ETF uh, sheet is not updating properly, so I'm, I'm, I don't know if I coded it wrong or something, so I'm gonna leave that one out today. I'll try to get it fixed by next week and then move on to some other ETFs as well, because I like to do like REITs and stuff and so on and so forth, so we can just kind of glance over these real quick. But down here, I believe it will be, and if not, it's blocking me out. Uh, you can see this is the growth ETFs. Uh, this is the same ones la from last week. I didn't uh, I didn't add any new ones yet, uh, but I've been working on the sheets, and I'm sure you can see there's a big difference in the sheets. They're actually all highlighting on their own. <laughs> so that is a big plus, man. So the one day percentage change, you can see that there. Um, and then let's go year to date. Uh, the SPGP is leading the way with a negative 11.10%. And the worst performer so far in the year to date would be VUG at a negative 21.12. Uh, let's move to the five day, five day percentage. Um, actually, well, does that really matter? You guys really want to hear about the five day, but we'll do it anyway, right? Okay, so the five day, last five days, the best performer has been SPGP again at a negative 6.24%. Uh, the worst performer in the last five days has been SCHG at a negative 7.37%.
Let's move on down to one year. Who's been performing the best over the last year? That would be, again, SPGP at a positive 1.01%, and the worst performer would go back to VUG at a negative 8.57%. Five year, best performer, QQQ at a plus 133.34%. And the worst performer of the group would be IUSG at a positive 97.61. And I'm going to go ahead and leave out the dividend in on this stuff and my, my shares. I don't know if that's something you guys are interested in. If it is and you want to see how that's progressing, please let me know. And I'll, I'll keep adding that back in each week so you can, guys can see how much that's progressing. If, you know, I just, I was like, I started thinking about it last week, over the week. I was like, man, should I even put that in there? <laughs> so the dividends. Um, the dividend ETFs. Here we go, man. We have the one one day percentage change, which you know it's only been one day. Uh, VIG is leading with a positive 0.64 uh, percent, and the worst performer uh, in the one day was uh, our uh, SPYD at a negative 0.5 one uh, five percent. Sorry about that. I kind of lost my train of thought there. Year to date. And I'll get these uh, slightly in different orders, but I'll, I'll get them all worked out. Like I said, it's, it takes a lot of time, and you don't know what you're doing with these. <laughs> so, year to date, man. The best performer uh, is DHS at a positive 5.11%. And the RDVY is the worst performer at 11.26% uh, year to date. The, the five day, and it goes back to again, RDVY was the worst performer at a 6.43%, and the best performer of the last five days has been SPHD at a negative 3.90%. That's so funny to say that, you know, negative, but uh, that's the best performer. Okay, let's go one year out, you know, one year ago. Uh, let's see, the best performer was DHS at 11.47%, and the worst performer would be VY, uh, VYMI at a negative 5.56%. And let's jump about five years and see who has been the best performer and the worst performer. The best performer so far uh, in the five year would be DGRW. Uh, I'm going to scroll across here, make sure I'm right, at 71.08%. And the worst performer would be VYMI again uh, at a plus 3.65%. So that goes with that. And again, let me know, guys, if you're interested in seeing the dividends and so on and so forth. There's two SCHDs. What I think I'm going to do is take all my SCHDs, and that way I can consolidate that one and just the one SCHD, and I'll put all my shares from my por different portfolios into one. All right, lastly, and this is the one that uh, a couple of people said that was, was basically pointless. And, I, you know, I don't find it pointless. Um, I find it very interesting. Uh, and then I did add dividends in this, and I will show you the dividends because, I mean, the dividends are a big part of these. So I think that's something important. Now, I, I'm not going to be able to update these daily because the dividends will change, but this will be really close. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to, to get it so it updates on its own, but I haven't quite figured that out yet. Anybody knows how to do that, let me know on these Google Sheets, man, how you can get the dividends update on their own. Uh, anyway, so let's just jump right on into it, man. We have uh, the last day percentage change. I QYLD is in blank. I wonder what happened there. So I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't catch that in the uh, in before I clipped. So unfortunately, we're not going to have QYLD in the uh, the one day. Uh, but the best performer uh, in the one day was USOI at a plus 0.37 percent, and the worst performer was SLBO at a negative 0.82 percent. Uh, let's go year to date. Year to date, uh, the best performer has been SU, uh, at USOI again at a positive 5.2%. And the worst performer has been NUSI, and uh, yeah, NUSI has not been doing well, uh, is negative 18.80%. Let's jump out uh, to the five days. So I'm going to have to get these in order so it makes more sense. But uh, five day, we have the best performer. In the five day is S U S O I again at a negative 18.18%, and the worst performer would be F T H I at a negative 6.72%. Year to date, or not year to date, one year, uh, best performer. And it would be, uh, let's see, it, that, that one just keeps continuing. U S O I at a t positive 12.81%. And the worst performer, uh, again, uh, was it was earlier, was SLVO at a negative 23.33%. And the five year, let's jump out five years. The best performer uh, would be DIVO 
at 36.64%, and the worst performer in the group, and this is funny, uh, because it's the best performer right now, but the worst performer in the group would be USOI at a negative 77.5%. So I'll end it there, guys. I think I've held you up long enough. Uh, again, I'll try to work on these spreadsheets and get them in order, make it more sense, and uh, and I'll try to get the uh, leveraged uh, straightened out so we can bring that back in next week. Again, I truly appreciate you all joining me, man. It's it's I enjoy doing this, and, and you guys are making it that much more fun. So I guess I'll see you guys next week. You all have a great week, and uh, maybe I'll see you this weekend, right? <laughs> see you guys.